Hi, and welcome to another edition of the IDS Talks podcast. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome. If this is not your first time, well, then welcome back. Um, today, I have part of the dynamic duo of Dan and Tim, but Dan, you are not in England. No, I'm not. And, uh, you, you know, very happy to say that, that uh, the borders are open and, and we're starting to travel and it was going to always happen and it was always my number one first stop, but I'm back in Brussels, Belgium. That is pretty awesome. That's a bit more exciting than where I am, although I guess I have been uh, released from the unfinished basement location uh, and am uh, in a wonderful hotel room outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we just had our IDS Connect South where we got part of our team together for uh, an in-person meeting. First time that we've seen some folks since uh, COVID. So I think you win though, in terms of geographic location for the day. Maybe, but you win in terms of the company around you because uh, I am quite envious to, to you know, see all of you together and, and spending that quality time. It's, it's been uh, a while coming and just to see everyone and, and uh, hear about all the fun you guys have been having over there. It's, uh, you know, I wish I was there with you. We'll, we'll get you to, uh, to connect uh, north. Uh, so yeah. tell us about your connection to Belgium. I mean, you got a huge smile on your face and I know it's not just because we're talking. I know this, yeah. that, that, that Belgium holds a special place in your heart. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's one of those places that's been very pivotal in my life uh, and, and has really sort of set me on the trajectory to where I am today. And, and a lot of that was built around my experience here. Uh, so I moved to Belgium from the U.S., uh, from Washington, D.C., uh, to, to, to here in about 2012 uh, and lived almost five years uh, in the city working at a, a large international law firm here. Um, so, it, you know, one being my first foray out of the U.S. and in a very long time in terms of living abroad, uh, two, being back in Europe closer to family, uh, but three, I mean, one of my children were, uh, was born here, my daughter Tabitha, we call her Tig. Uh, she was born in Belgium. We call her our, our Brussels sprout. Uh, you, yeah, you know, it's just cute. one of those <laughs> yeah, very cute. And, and it's just one of those things when, when you at a certain point in your life in a certain place uh, during that time, it will always be very special. So whenever I come back here, yeah, you know, the waffles and the beer help, but it's the place that puts the smile on my face. I, I was waiting for the beer reference. <clears throat> I know you are very <laughs> partial to the Belgian beers. And uh, mm -hmm. as I have learned since uh, I came back from uh, from my trip to London, <clears throat> that uh, while the English chocolate is good, really your favorite chocolate is from Belgium. Absolutely. I mean, they take it to the next level here. And I mean, it's true of the Belgians in general. I mean, what they do, they do incredibly well. Uh, nothing is done half measured here in, in this country. So, you know, the chocolate is treated as a as a delicacy. And, you know, you go into the chocolate shops and it's all white glove and, you know, they really treat it as an experience. And you walk away and you sort of think to yourself, well, how could how, how good can it be? How much better can it be? And then you take that first bite and it it just goes through you. It is just absolutely incredible. Same way with beer, but they go through all the various different things that, that Belgium is known for. And again, they just take it to the next level. Yeah, well, so all I heard from that is uh, when I make my way back over to London in September, that uh, there'll be a piece of chocolate waiting for me at the desk when I come into the offices. And then we'll yeah. have to go find somewhere. Um, we'll have to find someone else's local, perhaps, that has a Belgian beer that we can have. Or we'll find one near uh, near the IDS local. I'll, I'll do you one better, Jonathan. We'll just hop a train and come over here for a couple of days, and you can meet some of our friends and clients of IDS and uh, kill kill eight birds with one stone. Uh, I would not say no to that. So uh, that's <laughs> very well, very well, maybe an extended trip to uh, hey. to Europe for me in in September. Um, so. A couple of questions. I don't know much about uh, the types of matters that might be unique 
to to Belgium. And so um, for for our listening and or viewing audience, they may also say, well, that's a really pretty background, but what would bring, other than chocolate and beer, what would bring Dan to Belgium? Sure, and I'll, I'll sort of go into more detail in terms of the history of what's behind me in a bit, but in terms of the work that, that is really found here and, and how IDS fits into the equation, and, and in particular, sort of the, the work that we're doing in the investigation space, uh, and, and my background from, from the law firm days, uh, it really is the epicenter in Europe for uh, European competition law, or antitrust law, as it's referred to in, in the United States. Um, it really is the end point. It's, it's, you know, similar to the DOJ or the FTC. This is where the investigations begin and end in terms of the disclosure. Uh, so whereby it's not necessarily in Belgium where you have all the competition matters kicking off. It is here where, where everything is decided and discussed. Um, so a lot of law firms, global law firms, uh, have, ha have offices here that are sort of the hub of these larger investigative practices that, that span out to the rest of Europe, uh, over to the United States. Uh, whenever there's a anti-competitive uh, sort of activity happening within the market, a lot of it is driven out of uh, sort of the law firm hubs that, are, that, that find themselves in, in Brussels. Um, it's actually quite funny because when I moved from Washington, D.C. To, to Brussels, there's a lot of similarities because uh, it, similarly, DC is, is very much sort of a hub for that type of activity as well. So similar law firms, similar sort of environment in terms of the legal community. Uh, so even though it was a huge leap uh, in terms of cultural shifts, uh, there was some aspect of it that was quite familiar to me when I got here. Yeah, it, very, very interesting. Um, so why don't you uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about specifically where you are and and I know uh, that I enjoy hearing about some of these significant landmarks historical places that uh, that we've recorded. Yeah. So if you can see out there, so uh, right here is is the uh, Centre de Ville, uh, the the main sort of building in. Brussels. This, this is called the Grand Place, which is the most famous square in, in all of Belgium. Uh, and that is the, the sort of town hall for, uh, for the city of Belgium, uh, for the city of Brussels. Uh, and back in the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages, uh, Brussels was sort of the um, economic hub of Europe, probably one of the reasons why the European Commission is here as well. It's very central to, to all European nations. Uh, and a lot of business was done at the at the city hall here. Um, and what ended up happening afterwards is a sort of keeping up with the Joneses type of scenario where all the various mercantile guilds of the age started building their guild halls around the 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 city hall. So if you look around, you see these beautiful, ornate buildings, you know, covered in gold lace and uh, and just very magnificently sort of built structures. And it's awe-inspiring. I don't think it does it justice probably here on the video, but it's awe-inspiring and, and maybe a little bit biased, but I do think it is one of the, if not the most beautiful square in all of Europe. So, uh, so yeah, oh, it's an incredible, that's... incredible spot. I've been I to a few maybe... too, so I'm basing that a little bit on experience. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we won't just stop in Belgium. Maybe then we'll need to make our way over to Italy and see if there's yeah. some good competing uh, squares there. Munich. That, that's, that's, oh, wow. Munich, is a, Munich is up there. <laughs> that would be really unfortunate if it happened to be September as well, since those who know Oktoberfest really doesn't start in October. No, no, no. It's a uh, very, very different time of year. It's, uh, it's, it, was, it was to commemorate the the wedding of a, of a prince and it was just the party up until the wedding. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a whole different beat. And, uh, that, that, it's something the liver needs to get very prepped for. <laughs> <laughs> practice. It's, it would take yeah. practice. So would you say that in terms of uh, when you're visiting Belgium uh, or you're in Brussels, this one of your favorite spots to go or do you have another favorite? Um, no, I mean, they're very different 
reasons throughout the city that I that I like to enjoy. I mean, this is this is quintessential for me. So you know, the first thing I do when I come into Brussels is come to the to the Grand Place and have a, a coffee or a beer sitting outside, uh, because again, it, it is just one of those one of those places. Um, but there are also you know other areas that that are really beautiful. There's a, a park next to where I used to live called Saint Contenaire. Um, very, very idyllic in terms of uh, how the park was built. It's a French-style park, so it's got uh, it's very manicured with its statues and fountains. Um, it's also where the European Commission is. My kids grew up playing in the sandboxes at the park, so again, uh, it's it, it's got a, a a strong place in my heart. Um, there's also a, an area just a little bit further out uh, called the Atomium which is uh, Brussels version of the, well, it's not their version of the Eiffel Tower, but when they had the large exposition here, uh, all these expos build uh, huge structures to commemorate the, the, the festival. Uh, that's where the Eiffel Tower was built and what it was built for. Um, many of you may know or, or may not know, but it was meant to be temporary, but loved it so much that, that it ended up staying there. Um, but here they have something similar called the Atomium, which looks like a, uh, it almost looks like a, sort of like an atom, a structure of an atom. And it's these, it's a massive, massive structure that uh, just, it's, it's amazing. It's a, a really cool place to go. And again, quite a bit around there in terms of things to see and do. Well, I have to, I have to say, Dan, I'm, I'm pretty jealous right now. I mean, <laughs> no, no offense to where I am right now, but uh, based on what you've just shared, it seems like, uh, it's quite the trip for you. So, um, any anything uh, else you want to share with our listening or viewing audience since uh, we've got you there in Belgium? Um, just that it's it, it really does feel good to get out again. And and you know I, I love the UK. Everyone who talks to me, they know I'm I'm sort of British through and through through family history and my my own identity, even though it's quite convoluted. Um, but knowing that the doors are now open, that I can get across the channel, uh, that I'm again seeing friends and colleagues and and, uh, and really sort of connecting all the dots that we've been trying to maintain and develop from our basement. Uh, to now be, you know, out and back, it really feels like IDS is in a, in a position to, to really grow you know, back onto the continent. And, and after all, even though we're, we're centered in the UK, uh, we're, we're, we're pan-European. Um, we, we have clients, we've worked on matters from Spain up to uh, Norway. And, and from, from that perspective, to be able to, to get out here and actually talk to our clients face-to-face, -face, uh, it really is uh, an exciting time and, and very much, uh, again, making me really happy. Yeah, well, look, I, I, I love that. You used a word, uh, you used the word grow. I think that's a great teaser for our next transatlantic tea time. Don't indeed, want to say indeed. too much, but we may have someone's face on camera and hear a voice that is new and is legit <laughs> British. Yeah, not like so, this East London know, accent that I have, right? <laughs> alleged, alleged accent. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, Dan, thanks for taking time out of your trip to Belgium. Uh, to those who have been listening to this podcast or watching our video, thank you for joining. If you aren't currently subscribed, please go to wherever you download your favorite podcasts. Uh, also, uh, if you want to see these, this video or any of our other videos or any of our future videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, IDS Talks TV. Dan, safe travels. Enjoy. Not too much beer, not too much chocolate, except remember, just make sure there's enough for when I get over there in September. I'll have some saved for you, man. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Again, everyone, thank you. Have a good day. And uh, this was our IDS Talks podcast, Transatlantic Tea Time, Belgium version.